What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Servant King TV here on the Servant Real. And today I got a special guest, y'all. Like always, and I know what y'all gonna say. It's always it's just always a special guest, sir. And yes it is. And today is no different. Today I got my brother Vashon Grissett today. And he's gonna talk about all the things he got going on. We're gonna touch on this business, we're gonna touch on football, we're gonna touch on politics. And listen, we got we got this one gonna be a real impactful. So without further ado, what's going on, bro? Not too much, man. I'm uh, glad glad you invited me to do this, man. I definitely uh, appreciate the the time to get the you know talk about the things I do have going on, and uh, and hopefully, like you said, we are able to impact some people and get some people thinking, man. You know, I know that's a part of what you like to do, man, yep. is get people thinking, um, get people really, you know, involved and in, in think, and even you know, kind of look at the, some of the things they do in their own life. Right. So, you know, I'm 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 happy to be here to be able to hopefully, like I said, help get some people thinking, man. So. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, bro. Um, so let's get into it, man. First of all, kind of give me a, a start. Huh? What were you? Where you from? I'm from right here in Jacksonville, Florida. You see, see my shirt, South Side Original. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, I actually was. Uh, I was raised on the North Side up until about fifth grade. I moved over to um, Spring Park area. So um, since fifth grade on up, I've been South Side, South Side down. You know, so okay. you know. Definitely, definitely. Um, well, I know. Um, your past, you've been big. You was big in football. That was always, you know what I'm saying? That, that, yeah, was, that yeah. was always your, your thing. Kind of tell us where you at with that right now. Yep, yeah. Well, right now, see, I, I own my own semi-pro football team, so I, uh, it's a... Uh, it's it's more of a hobby than a business. Now I do run it as a business as well, but of course, you know, it's something that I enjoy doing. Um I still play, I coach a little bit and then I do the ownership side of it as well. So, you know, I've gotten some great experiences doing that. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, it's kinda kinda cool, you know, some of the friendships and connections you see yeah, people yeah, make yeah, 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 uh yeah. just from playing football together, you know. So kinda kinda explain what that is, like the semi pro. Kinda explain what that what that is for uh, especially for me, but for those that don't kinda understand the difference between the semi pro because we got semi pro teams all over the nation, right? Yep, yep. Kinda yep. explain what, what, what semi pro is and what that means. So I call it so uh actually one of my coaches, uh Coach Ken Anderson said uh he called it underground football. Oh, so <laughs> okay. I really call it it's really like adult amateur football. So you got eleven on eleven, full pass, full go, grown adult men playing football against each other. You okay. know, so okay. you know, and then different communities build up different teams and things right. like that. So we got you know, we got several teams here in Jacksonville and then uh the league we play is based out of Tampa, so it's lead it's team but it's teams all across the nation. It's right, literally right, right, right. Okay. you know, tens of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands. The players I have playing this uh this type of football. Okay, okay. okay. So you, you love that. I, I, like I said, I know football always been your thing. So yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a passion, you know. Okay. It's a passion, and on top of that, like I think a lot of people don't really understand what it do for for men. You know what I'm right, saying? It's right. like therapy for yeah, us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely, so absolutely. you know, you get to go out there, be aggressive, beat up on people for a couple right, hours, right. and you know, and, and and then you know, your aggression, your anger, anything yeah, you got yeah. built up on your chest, you know, you get to knock that off. Right, you know what right. I mean? So so for some of it, it's therapy. You know what I mean? Right, right. So kind of um, tap into your, your business. I know you're a business owner. You have a, a lawn service or a landscape service. You kind of kind of let's tap into that. What you're doing with with that? Yep, yep. So uh, it's actually a football based lawn service. Okay. So it's a greatest show on turf. Okay. You know, so uh, uh, yep, yep, yep. So uh, that that's that's what I do. I you know I do a lot of uh, cleanups and things like that. Um, but I also do like regular lawn maintenance, landscaping, um, pretty much pressure washing. You know, just uh. Anything and everything you can name outside, you know, anything outside of your house, you know, that, that that's what I do. So, um, you know, I do a little concrete, do a little 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 little, little bit of everything here and there. So, what got what what got you what got you into that? Like, what what made you go that way? Was it? I mean, which I don't think not wrong with people doing stuff because they want to get paid, or that's something you always thought about doing, or that's something that just kind of done. Like, man, I could do that, or what was it that that kind of got you into that space? Well, it was actually working into that industry. Of okay. course, you know, as a kid, you know, my first job was going to take the lawnmower right, and go right, and knock right, on the neighbor's right, doors. Right. Can and, I cut your you yard? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 can yeah, I cut yeah, your yeah, yard? Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. so that was the first thing, you know, I started doing that, man. And, of course, it, it was money in that, you know, but then uh, I I was at a time where I needed to go work, and I went back to this business, you know. I went back to this lawn business. I started doing it. At first, I started off, I was uh, just working for a guy, just as a, a regular guy, of course, and then uh, he promoted me to a foreman. And then uh, he wasn't paying me enough, so uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I said, all right, I got I to gotta, uh, leave and go do something else. Right. And then uh, he ended up calling me back a few months later and said, hey, look, man, I, I really, really need you to come back. Mm -hmm. He said, all right, so we could talk about it. So he ended up making me the GM of his company. Okay. So okay. I became his general manager. 
And then uh, after uh, taking that job, pretty much, you know, I knew that, you know, I could do my own company, right. make a lot more money actually working for myself. And, you know, and the thing about it is, you know, I really do enjoy doing the work. Right. So right. it's like, you know, just being outside, being able to, it's something that you do something a little, a little bit different every day. Right. You know, so it's, it, you know, it's physical work, hard work, but at the same time, you know, it, it's very rewarding. Right. You know, it, and then on top of that, you know, you get a little exercise, a little workout while you're out there working too. So I enjoy that aspect of it as well. What's um what like what's your goal like what's your um like what what's your plans for when you if 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 you could have the perfect scenario um in ten years with the business what would it be or an idea of what would it be? Well, the the idea is to you know of course pick it up. Uh, build it up and grow it to the point where I'm putting multiple trucks out. Right, you know, right, got a lot of right, brand recognition right, and name recognition right. here in Jacksonville. Um, I do also have plans to expand to other cities, okay. you know, and bring, you know, friends that I know that live yeah, in those yeah, cities yeah, yeah, and yeah. train them up and get them, show, show them the way we do things and get them, you know, build, build up in this business well and then send them back to their cities and, you know, hopefully, you know, really all over Florida is where I want to be, um, just in Florida, you okay. know, so um, that, but that that's the idea behind it, you know, so I already kind of starting to kind of put that plan in motion. Um, I've already got a couple of people that uh, I've talked to about the possibilities of expanding with, and uh, of course they with it. Um, and then on top of that, man, I also got uh, other partnerships that are, and stuff that I'm building that's going to um, help build and make this thing grow. So okay, that's what's up, bro. Yes, sir. Well, well, you know, I really well. Let's get in. I really want to get into the meat of you know um, <laughs> what what you know what we talked about before you came. There's a lot of stuff that yes, sir. Um, I know you got some information that we're going to kind of try to. Um, educate or inform people on a couple of things so um you begin into politics that's kind of your your that's your space so kind of talk to me about um what it is you've done in politics what it is you do and then we'll we'll kind of go from there Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I am big into politics, man, and uh, of course, like I said, there's a lot of reason for that. But um, uh, the what I do is I, I actually I ran for mayor of Jacksonville. Uh, that was my first kind of uh, exploration into politics. Okay. Of course, you know everybody said I was crazy, this mm -hmm. and that. You know, of course, I, I, and, and I knew it was gonna be like right, that. Right, 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 right. I knew it was gonna be like that. So it's nothing that I didn't expect. Right. You know, but at the same time, you know, like, and they say, okay, well, why didn't you run for city council first? Mm -hmm. You know, why didn't? Well, because the change and the impact that I want to make. It's right. not going to be, it, it can't be made from there. Ah, okay. okay. You know, okay. it can't be made okay. from there. So, okay. you know, and, you know, part of the, and part of what I really want to do is, you know, people need to really understand and pay attention to their local politics, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't really understand how this affects us and, you know, how it's supposed to affect right, us. Right, right, right. Um, but um, what what I'm doing now is part of the reason why I'm really trying to build my business and get it to grow is because, you know, I've learned what it takes to run a successful campaign mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know, so. Money. Yep, yep. It, it takes it take, it take, it take some money. It, it takes some real money. And because, uh, of course, the incumbent mayor, Curry, he had $2 million raised before the race even started. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's hard to compete against that. Right, right. You right. know, so, right. it, you know, you, but, but you, you, you live and you learn. Right, right, right. You know, right. and if I didn't get the experience of doing it, then I wouldn't know all of the things right. that I know now for right. when I'm ready. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, but. So let, let, let's kind of dig into that because I, um, uh, as growing up, you know, as especially in our community, the majority of the time we're raised under a particular party. Um, we're raised under that particular party for the most part just because we're black most of the time. Um, for me, let me speak for me. Um, there was really no insight on why I was uh, liberal. Um, it's just kind of who we sided with as I got a little older. And I started to learn just some of the agendas and some of the policies of each party. I kind of persuade, you know, kind of swayed it the, the other way. Um, and even since then, I've kind of found myself in the middle. So I'm registered independent. Voter registration is independent. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people. I don't fully agree with everything this side do, and I don't fully agree with everything this side do. So I kind of find that found that balance. Where are you and where is your stance when it comes to liberal, conservative, independent? And then kind of tell us what, what, what would you like to see in the future um, as far as where we go, not just as um, black people, but as, we, as the future as, as far as we go with the city. 
Okay, so you know the the biggest thing, me personally, I mean, I'm registered independent. Okay. So I ran independent, registered independent. Of course, you know, in the world of politics, it's not popular, you know, because you you know you got a voter block that's Democratic, you got a voter block that's Republican. Mm -hmm. But just like you, I don't really agree with either party. Right. Now, I will say that my views are more conservative. Okay. You know, and and that and I don't think that's a party thing. I think a lot of people kind of confuse that. Yeah. You know, they confuse uh, conservative with Republican. They think right. they mean the same thing, and right. they they don't. They right. absolutely do not right, right. you know so um, and I think there's a lot of uh, disconnect there so um, I do tend my tend to see myself more as a, a real conservative a true conservative right, and that's right. from every aspect from politics even down to my personal life right, right you know right, what I mean right, so right. What, what what do you think it is though about our people that makes um, that makes us partner with with one side right like why 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 is it that because I, I and this is this, there's no study or no statistics that showed me that this was from my own experience. This last election, I was I, I was intentional about asking people why were they voting this way, and I don't remember one time getting an answer that was policy based or legislation based. Everything was I don't like so and so or so and so doesn't like me. Do you think we put too much emotion um, into our vote? Or do you think we don't put enough emotion? Like, how, where, where do you stand on that? Well, um, that's a great question. I will say that um, I just think we need to have like a political awakening. Mm -hmm. a polit a, a, I think it's time for a political maturity. Right. Okay. You know, and th those aren't my words. I'm right, gonna tell right. you, I, I got that from Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. He said that back in 1964, I want right, to say, right. and he was telling us that we then. need to have. A, he was telling us that then <laughs> right. that we need to have a political awakening, a political right. maturity. We right. don't understand politics, mm -hmm. and the thing about it is, we will argue back and forth all day and say we do, we do, we do, we do, we have no clue. but we have no clue. Mm -hmm. You know. We and and like you said, man, we we vote based off our emotions mm -hmm. and how not necessarily how we feel, but how we told to feel. Right. Yep. yep. You know, because we don't really understand how how far, how big and far government reach. Yep. What what's all involved in government? Right. We just think that it's uh oh the people who pass the laws. Right. You know or whatever whatever. And a lot of people don't even think that. They just right. think it's the people who control things. Right. 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 You right. know what I mean? And right. we we don't understand what role politics are supposed to play in our life. We don't understand uh, what role they're not supposed to play in our life. Right. Um, we let politics over. We let the government overstep their boundaries, mm -hmm. and we we just it, we we know better than to trust certain aspects of the government. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like when we told to trust them, we trust them anyways. And right. it's like, nah, man, we gotta know better. We gotta use our brains. Mm -hmm. We gotta use more common sense mm -hmm. um, in regards to politics too. Right. right. Um, where do you stand on? Because I got um, crucified this last. Election. Last couple <laughs> elections, I got crucified because um, I'm I'm kind of on the side of. First of all, I I believe local politics are more effective than the national or the federal yeah. politics yeah, as yeah. a whole. I, I feel like that. But even within that, I'm one of those people who believe my vote counts so much that me holding it until somebody really stands up for something. Is more important than me just voting because it's almost like we're zombies, bro. Like I'm, I'm voting because my ancestors <laughs> died for me to vote. Like that's all we know. Like yeah, th th yeah, we don't yeah. vote for no other reason except for our ancestors died for us to vote. We don't vote because I mean we don't own land because our ancestors died for us to own land. We don't read books because our ancestors died for us to read books. We don't try to further our education. I'm talking about as a masses, guys. I'm not talking about Each you individual. in particular, yeah. individuals. I'm talking about us as a community as a whole. We don't do. We don't do anything because our ancestors died for us to do it except vote. So where do you stand on those of us that say, well, I'm going to hold my vote? Because I'm not on the side of I'll never vote again. I'm saying neither one of these guys seem like they're in it for me. So how about I hold my vote? How do you feel about those of us that, that kind of just decide to, 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 to stand down? <laughs> See, we... I, I, I kind of feel like you in regard, because the thing about it is, of course, if you not decided on who you, what, what policy you right. like, and the, and the thing about it is, 
it, when you do vote, it should be policy based. Right. We need to look at the policy. We right. need to learn how how to look at the policy. What this policy means to me, mm -hmm. you know, and how how will this policy affect me? Mm -hmm. How will this policy affect my family? Mm -hmm. How will this policy affect my job? You know, how will this policy affect the economy? You know, and we need to pay attention to those kind of things. But instead, we don't. Mm -hmm. We just go by we we just go by whatever rhetoric we see. Right. We go by whatever we hear and go by that. We can't do that. So that that's the first thing is we gotta we gotta we gotta vote policy based. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is if you don't understand the policy, if you don't really know what you're getting yourself into, then maybe you should withhold your vote. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't just go out and vote just because it's what I should do. Because and if you haven't done any research into the candidates and don't knew, know who and what you're voting for, mm -hmm. then what's the point of in, in, in doing a vote? Voting, right. What's the point in voting? What are you really voting right. for? Right. You know what I mean? So I, I def I definitely get that. But it seems like whenever they want to sell black people a narrative. Yeah, they they know how to do it. They know how to touch our. They know how to pull our feeling strings and get us to do exactly what they want us to do. And that's in most scenarios. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna tell you, man. I I won't get into it today, man. But a lot of the stuff, man. Like I just I I can't buy into it, man. I can't spend my time and energy focusing on it, man. I can't I can't do it because if I, if I did that, then I'm gonna be mad about something different every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. And I ain't got time to live my life like that, dog. Right, and we right. always talk about, oh, we want positive, we want peace, we want this, we want that. Right. But every time they go throw us a throw us a news media headline in our face, it'll turn, we, our, whole day it'll turn our whole day upside down. And then now we spend it all day talking about it on social media with people mm -hmm. for a week or two, mm -hmm. and then we don't forgot about it anyways, yeah. and we don't moved right. on until they come with the next one. So you so you believe that media plays a big part of the narrative that's 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 pushed throughout. The, the community, cause I, I, I me personally, it's like they, they can control what trend. All they gotta do is place it out there and put it on Twitter a thousand times, and we, we are, we, we about to fight each other at work. Yeah, about something that happened in Minnesota, and we don't even know if it really happened. You know what I'm saying? Not, yeah, yeah. not saying anything that happened in Minnesota <laughs> didn't happen. I'm just giving you an example. I, 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 I get I it. Idaho, Seattle, Washington, wherever it happened at. Yeah, and they've just told us a story because. If you put something on Facebook, it's true, I guess. Like, that's, yeah. that's the world we live in. If you see it on Facebook, it's true. We share it. We comment on it. And it's like, man, so what What role do you think media plays as far as as far as far us and our emotional roller coaster? See, now, nah, listen, man, that, that's a whole nother, another mm -hmm. episode, man. Yeah, they, yeah. Let, let me tell you something. I, I know they use the media as a weapon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's the thing, man. It, and it's not... It's not one branch of media. Right, right. It's all of them. It's all of them. Yeah, 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 you listen yeah. to the radio. Mm -hmm. You got to understand when you listen to the radio. It's a reason why you hear the same songs on the radio oh, over man. and right. over and over right. and over. All right, right, let me tell you how mind control works, how government mind control works. Right. They know if we push, if you, if you, if they, the way they used to do it, they used to sit you in a room and they would play the same thing over mm -hmm. and over right. and over. You see it on the movies and yep. the cartoons and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. And yeah. eventually, yeah. your 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 subconscious will start yeah. to to buy into it right. and believe whatever whatever it is. You can just gonna start saying it or repeating. It, right. and you become zombified right. by it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, and, and the thing about it is, the same few songs they play, are they really talking about the same thing in right. all those songs? Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. yeah, they, yeah, they are. <laughs> so they, so they, so they pushing you this boom, 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 right. boom, right. and then now they pushing you. They, they giving it to you there. And now, now, the music. We gonna. I mean, and I don't want to just talk about music as a whole. And a lot of people gonna say it's just entertainment. It's just this and that. But we musical, we spirit, we we creatures of vibration, right. and that music is vibration. Yeah. We we go by that vibration. That's why what they say when you're teaching a kid, a young child, the best way for them to learn is to teach them through a song. Yeah. The ABC you know, song. ABC That's song. how you learn ABC. That's how you learn yeah. the ABC. Yeah. 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 yeah, through a song. So you know, if you if you teach them through a song, they, wow. and so now you know you, we now we see how this affecting us. And when you think about how simple a lot of these lyrics is, mm -hmm. now go and anybody I recommend to do this. Take your time to just go. Read some of your favorite artist's lyrics. Right. Don't listen right. to it on the song. Just read it right. and see how simple it sounds. Right. <laughs> I mean, because Cardi B sound like Dr. Seuss. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you just reading the lyrics. If you just reading the lyrics. Right. It's li it's literally like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's that simple. Right. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you got mm. a lot of people that just let they let their kids listen to any kind of music. And I'm not just talking about just female artists. I'm talking about a lot of these right. artists yeah. in general that yeah. and, and and we let a lot of that control the narrative. Mm. And then not only that, now you got the news media that come in and they're gonna come in and they're gonna they're gonna make whatever narrative they want to make. Right. You know, because it's like and, and what I don't understand about our trust of the news media is like this because. We know they don't like us. Right. We know the, the we know the news right. media don't like right. us. But we but, but we will believe them when, when they want when, when they when they oh when they want to pull us up pulling them feeling strings again. Right, right. That's right. when we believe them, right. and that's right. when we trust them. Right. Malcolm told us 
don't trust the uh, don't trust the media. Right. Malcolm told us that the media will have you. Uh, he could make it, make it make the innocent look guilty and the guilty look innocent. innocent. Absolutely, and that's power. Yeah. You don't understand that. That's yeah. power because they can yeah. they, you can control whatever narrative you want to control yeah. as long as you got that. Yeah. It's crazy when you talk about that because I had um shout out to my brother Reese the poet saying Reese was here a couple weeks ago and he said he he who controls the media controls the masses. So, and I'm pretty sure that was said by the person who controls the media. Um, it's like, uh, and that's why, so how important is history? Because it seems like the more I dig into my history, the more I learn. If, if you know anything about Hitler, the, the, that, the whole genocide of those people started with the media. He had to, he had to control the narrative of the media to convince one group of people that this group of people are a certain way. That's the only way you can get a group of people to do exactly what you, you telling them to do. So how do, bro, how do we do more uh, self-checking? How do we do more history? How do we do more research on these different policies and these different parties? Like, how do, how do we go about it for those that don't know or might not know? Yeah, well, f for me personally, I'm going to tell you, like, to, to get to where we are right now politically, mm -hmm. um, as far as just people in general, not necessarily just black people, but pe people in general, mm -hmm. I think it's best to go back to like around the time of the civil rights movement, because mm -hmm. that's pretty much why I did it. That's pretty much why I got stuck in all my heavy research, mm -hmm. like, like, cause I, I tell you what happened, what really got me into politics, cause man, I, you know, I was just like you, bro. I probably like most people. Mm -hmm. I did not care about politics. Right. I didn't care about them. Didn't care for them. I was, you know, you know, whatever. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with right, me. Right, it don't. Right. It ain't gonna affect my life. Right, right, right. You know, but um. I had one of my close friends, Al Lance. Al, yeah, Al, little Al. Al, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Al got shot and killed, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, it made me really dig deep in myself. You know, I wanted to understand why it was so common for a young black man to die and for just it to just be another day, dog. Like, right. like what is happening to us? Why are we, why are we setting ourselves up for these types of traps? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I just know that it's not natural for us to live this way, right. being that I've been around young black men my whole All life, life. Right. you know what I'm saying, like, I know it's not natural, and don't get me wrong, dog. like, we was all out here wilding at some point, right. dog. but right. the way we live and stuff like that, it ain't natural to us, right. you know what I'm saying, right. like, right. and I know, you know what I'm saying, I knew something was up, you know what I'm saying, right. so, I really started to dig deep, man, and I'm gonna tell you, it led me right to politics, it led me to politics, it led me to how, you know, how they took jobs from us, mm -hmm. they, they, they gave, they put, they put drugs in certain communities, yep. they, they locked us up, and then now, you know, they really control the political narrative, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, so, like you said, and we, what we learn in a black household about politics is this simple, Democrats help black people, <laughs> Republicans are racist, For, yeah. and, and that's rich literally and white what, and racist. yep, rich yeah. and white and racist, yeah. and they yeah. want to hold you back, and that's mm -hmm. all we literally learn about politics, we mm -hmm. don't, we don't have, we, we don't know anything else about it, mm -hmm. we don't know how policy works, we don't know how it affects us, we don't even know that, how the three branches of government work, yep. we don't know any of that, we right. just, and even w what we learn in school, they don't really teach us a whole lot of that. They don't. They don't, they, they don't no. teach us how the political views kind of shape who we are. They don't yeah. teach us those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a lot of like really growth that we need to do politically. Mm -hmm. You know, as people, and I, and 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 really shit. Not, I, really, I'm sorry. I apologize yeah, yeah, for my yeah, late, yeah, yeah. but uh, I, I really is not just black people. I think all people need to take yeah. up, take the time to really learn more about politics and learn what they are voting for and what they voting against. Right, right, you know what I mean? Right, so right. It, it's 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 got to be. You know, it, 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 it takes some time. But like I said, I started around the civil rights movement, and it really showed me a lot. Right. It showed me a lot, man. And it's, that's, it's, that's true because when I think back to, um, like you said, just digging, and as I do more research and reading, it's crazy because it's hard for me to just be stone-cold Democrat or stone-cold Republican, which is why, like you said earlier, I think it's important to understand liberal and conservative <laughs> opposed to democrat and republican because that that could be two different things they can wrap it up in one yeah but yep. you usually can find some separation in it and the more i dig first of all the uh, the we talked about this earlier the original party for black people was the republican party frederick Douglass was a republican yep, yep. right so at some point in time things things switch but what I was getting to as as I as I'm doing more research, um, and I think you spoke to this, we are almost naturally conservative people. Yeah. Just 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 as a people. So kind of break that down how we were talking earlier, how how us as a people, we're actually naturally conservatives. 
Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll tell you, what, one of the other things that I do a lot of research into and I recommend for anybody is called etymology. Mm -hmm. So that's a study and breakdown of words. Okay. So you can learn a lot about a word if you if you study and break it down. Yeah. Some some of it kind of simple now. Because, right. all right, so like I say, we conservative by nature. What is mm -hmm. conservative? It means, see, we think we think conservative means Republican. Right. Conservative <laughs> literally means to conserve. conserve. <laughs> to conserve, to save. Who so does we it better than us? Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we want to save money that, oh, you better eat all that food on your right. plate. Right. We ain't wasting no food in this household. Yep. That's conservative. Right. You know what I'm saying? We ain't wasting no money on that. Right? We ain't got the money to waste on that right now. Mm -hmm. That's conservative. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we mm -hmm. we really conservative by nature. Right. You know what I'm saying? We want to save things. We want to you know. And then you got to look at the other side, liberal. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means to waste. Yeah. It means to waste. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So these people are literally wasting our money, throwing our money away, throwing it down the drain, spending it on useless programs that don't work. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We say, hey, keep experimenting. Keep experimenting. Keep, right. experimenting. Right. keep spending. Keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep spending this bread and see what see what work and don't work. Yeah. And, and man, I'm gonna tell you, man. Like I said, when I really started doing that research and I learned the difference between conservative and liberal, like like conservative politics. So conservative politics means less taxes yeah. because guess what? You deserve more of your hard earned mm -hmm. money. Right. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that's Republican politics because it's not. Right. Because if you look at the policy of your past few Republican presidents, with the exception of Donald Trump, a policy was very liberal. Mm -hmm. And that's George uh, W. Bush, H. W. Bush. Yeah. Um, both of them were very, but their policy was very liberal. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they can say they're a Republican, but that does not necessarily mean that they were conservative. Right. right you know, because, right. and, and that's also part of the reason why you see um, now when you look at presidents, you'll see the Bushes with the Obamas with yeah, the Clintons right. because right. they all on that same liberal mm -hmm. side of the, mm -hmm. the, the agenda. Right. You know, they've been pretty much they pretty much like people always say that the parties merged or switched right. at some point. Right. That's that that's that's true and it's not true. Right. What happened is the parties just got infiltrated. Right. So okay. Okay. if you if you because actually JFK was mm -hmm. the the first president that I really started to dig into and learn a lot about and he was a Democrat. Right. But his policy and views were conservative, right. very conservative, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is we love John F. Kennedy. Right. We love John F. Kennedy, right. Right. you know, but at the same time, we didn't understand who he was and what he was and that his policy was conservative. Right. Or oh, maybe maybe at that time we did. I'm not gonna say that because I wasn't there right, uh, right, during that election. Right. So due but, to Malcolm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Malcolm, per, 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 per Malcolm. So per Malcolm, you know, Jeff K would have been a conservative and. Mm -hmm. And then, like, okay, so uh, there's a speech that I would recommend for anybody to go listen to by Malcolm X, and you can find it on YouTube. It's called "The Ballot or the Bullet." Mm, yep. And uh, and great I'm, speech. Yep, yep, right. yep. It's one of my favorites. I listen to it often. You know, just to you know, kind of, kind of, kind of soak it all in. And you know, every time you listen to it, you kind of learn something new. You know what I mean? So I try to pay attention to it and, and learn from it. And I do that with a lot of his lectures, and there's a few other people that I listen to um, quite often, but. Malcolm definitely was one of my biggest influences politically, yep, yep, you know, because his his philosophy was 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 one that works, you know, and and that's another thing. And I want people to understand, especially with the civil rights movement, we always uh, associate Malcolm with by any means necessary with yep. violence, um, and that's not the yep. way that Malcolm. That's the media again. That's the media again. That's the media again. That's the media yeah. again. Because that's the only and that's the only Malcolm they give us. That's the only Malcolm they, they give us. They don't teach us Malcolm in school. They, they don't teach us they Malcolm, teach Malcolm in school. In school. Yeah. They don't. They don't. And, yeah. and the reason why they 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 had to take Malcolm out yep. is because. He started talking to us about politics. Yep. He started talking to us yep. about different things and telling us different things and really uh, getting a push behind himself. And they had, they had to take Malcolm out right. because, right. like I said, he was he was the one telling us. He said he said any time a party controls two thirds of the uh, of the government right. and can't keep your promises to you during election time, right. and you continue to vote for that party, you're a political chump. Yep. Yep. Not only are you a political chump, but you're a yep. traitor to your race. Yep. And it's like, man. Yep. And we don't even know that. We don't even know that. Even, even the Martin that they give us. They don't the give Martin, us all the Martin. They don't give us all they the Martin. They give us a Martin that they want. But there was a Martin after after the uh, we we shall overcome and let's uh -huh. together. There was a whole different Martin yeah, well, that they don't they don't kind of give us. So yeah. it's, it's it's man that media is is, is big, bro. Go ahead, it, it, exactly. No, and I was just gonna say it, but that's the reason why, and that's why they ended up taking out Martin too. Right. And see, and the thing is, because he had started meeting with right. Malcolm X. Right. The message and, started to change. And the magic message started yeah. to change. They mm -hmm. said, "Oh no, we can't have that." Not because, both of y'all need. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And see, and the thing about it is, what we don't understand is, see, a lot of those people during that time too, mm -hmm. they was getting paid, mm -hmm. and Malcolm told. 
told us that. All you got to do is go back. And I recommend anybody go back and read the autobiography of Malcolm X if you want to get a good understanding. And it, it, not only is it relevant for what's then, it's relevant for what's going on right now today. You know what I'm saying? He was talking the same exact fight and struggle that he was talking about is exactly what we're going through today. Man, we as a, as a, as a black community, we got so much self-degradation right now that we, we look down upon ourselves so much. We pity ourselves so much. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to prop ourselves up on our own two feet and stand up and want to continue to point the finger mm -hmm. everywhere else except for you know at ourselves mm -hmm. where we need to look in the mirror every day and say I need to change something about myself mm -hmm. to make it better for everybody okay. alright see what we don't even understand is that even at that time you know uh, Malcolm was telling us that certain uh, political activists were being paid by white liberals right, right. to push certain agendas right, right. you know and, mm -hmm. and Martin Luther King was one of those people mm -hmm. You know, like, remember he called the March on Washington the farce on Washington. Right, right, right. And, you know, and he was saying that pretty much, right. you know, they had, they take over, take, they took over the narrative of the march. Right. You know, you took, right. he said, when you, he said, you got angry people. We were not just supposed to be angry. You know, we angry at the government. Right. And now we out there, we singing, we shall overcome. Oh, right. You right. know, so right. how are we going to get any movement? Right. If that's the way we're going to do, we're going to let people come in and take right. over and take right. over the narrative. Right. You know, like he said, I got, I got a problem with any uh, organization that's ran by a white person that uh, is supposed to be in control of the black community. Right, right. You right, know, yep, yeah. yep. And, 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 but, but that's a, that's a whole other story, bro. Right, and, right. And, and the thing about it is, you know, we, we but, but the thing about it is, we don't even think about these kind of right. things. We don't think about how a lot of these organizations work. Right. We don't think about who they right. funded by. Right. We don't think about none of this stuff. Right. You know, we never really right. look into this stuff. I still to this day want to know who started Black Lives Matter. <laughs> I don't even know. We don't know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. We don't, I, we don't know who this guy is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, where is yeah. he? You know, we we know who started the Black Panther Party. We know we we got some. We know who led the Civil Rights Movement. Like, we kind of we know who the, the Nation of Islam. We we know who we can point to for particular things. But this particular movement, I just don't know. Listen, man. I, 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 like I said, that's one of those things I won't really get into because right. it's like it's a lot. It's, than you it's, a lot of, it's a lot. It's a lot deeper than you think, man. People don't understand, man. Just because something sounds like it's for us, don't mean it's for us, and we gotta, we gotta understand that. And it's easy to name something like that. Like I say, anytime we want to pull them little feeling strings, anytime they want to pull them, they know how to do it. And that's the same thing they do with these organizations. That's the same thing they do with these celebrities. That's the same thing they do with you know all these political activists, right. the people we follow, the people right. we like. Man, they 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 know, man. They right. they they knew it. So, you know. Let me let me ask you this. So, where do you stand on the? Um, you have that that group of black people that say, um, I don't want to say they play the victim, but 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 they can find the reasons, uh, in the system, right? That that they can't prevail, they can't uh, succeed, they can't step up. But then you have that group of black people. Um, that say no pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We don't have any more excuses. We have everything that we need in front of us. Which side of the ball are you on? Do you still think that the system holds us back or do you think at this point we're holding ourselves back? Well, see, and the thing about it, like, all right, so the system is real. Ain't no doubt about that. So they, they, they do use the system against us, but the system work a lot differently than we think. Right. You know, the system ain't what ain't what we think it is. It ain't that, you know, every institution is racist against us and this and that and blah, blah, blah. The system is the stuff we told we talked about before. It's the media system. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the music system. Mm -hmm. It's the education system. Yep. It's all of these systems that they use to, to work backwards against us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we don't realize it. We just continue to trust them. Like even with the school system, most people don't even look at the kind of curriculum they kid learning. Right. We don't even pay attention to it. Right. We know some of it don't make sense. We know that common core math wasn't making sense. I've seen a lot of people talk about that. <laughs> we knew that wasn't making sense. Right, right, but right. it's even like, look at what politicians was pushing pushing that on yeah, us. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we, we, we don't, but we, we just kind of ignore it. We, we ate it up. And we know it don't make no sense. Mm. You know what I mean? So, um, just, oh, but overall, like, because it seemed like, it seemed like all these kids making good grades, mm -hmm. A's, B's, C's. Mm -hmm. so it must be working. It must be working. Yeah. You know, but what are they really learning? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, how how is that system holding us back? Yeah. Like, even back when we was in school, dog, like, we was wilding. Mm -hmm. We was wilding in school. School ain't gonna stop us from doing what we All wanted right. to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, man, we had some wild individuals. And, like, I was, man, even my middle school was like that. Mm -hmm. We was wilding. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like, mm -hmm. man, and, and the thing about it is, for the most part, it's like, what, you going to suspend me? You going to send me home for three days? Mm -hmm. That's what it came to. That's what the disciplinary action mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. And at some point, your parent going to be like, damn, you home again? Again. You home again? <laughs> and they not, they not going to they not gonna really, right. they not going to keep just saying, man, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you until you get it right. Because mm -hmm. eventually they're going to get tired of that. Because right. they're going to see you you obviously not caring to get it right. Right. I mean, um, so let's get into some of these. Uh, some legislation and some policies that are, are kind of up in the headlines now. Um, there's a big discussion on minimum wage. Um, some people say it it should stay the way it is. Some people say it should be 15. Um, I'm more so on the side of I believe there's a difference between a minimum wage and a livable wage. And I also believe, me personally, that the minimum wage or livable wage discussion should be more so done as a state and not as uh, a federal. Just for the simple fact, you go to California, the prices are a lot different in California. Yeah, yeah. The prices in Texas are a lot different. The prices are a lot different in Miami <laughs> than they are in Jacksonville alone. So um, what where do you kind of stand as far as... Um, uh, the 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 minimum wage discussion goes and salary and things like that. I I believe the minimum wage should move up with mm -hmm. inflation. Um, mm -hmm, right. but don't uh, but it shouldn't be a set. You don't have a set dollar amount. But mm -hmm. of course, you know, if, as the cost of living move up in a place, the, the minimum should wage should move up. Right. But you know, you need to do uh, I guess a valid study on that to mm -hmm. see exactly what would be a fair wage for mm -hmm. earners to make. And we need to stop confusing minimum wage with livable wage. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we think because you work, you're supposed to be able to just afford everything you want to buy. <laughs> and that's not the way it works. Right. If you, if you, you know, when you starting off, you know, you working the minimum. My first job, I made $5.75 an hour right. working at Taco Bell. Right. You know what I'm saying, like that. You're not supposed to be able to take care of a family of four. <laughs> like that was not, <laughs> nah, not nah. intentions. <laughs> that, 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 that ain't the intention. Nah. And the thing about it is, if you're willing to better yourself, gain some skills, or do something, it's always some money out there to be made. Mm. It's always some money out there to be made. Mm. Like, I mean, it, 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 it don't really take much. Mm. It's people that's willing to teach you things. Like, mm. when I first got into the lawn business, you know what I'm saying? It was a guy I went to go work for, and he really taught me so much about the lawn business. He didn't even know he was teaching me at the time, right, for real. Right, right, right. You're you soaking know? up game. I'm soaking up yeah, game. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. soaking up game. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, he got me right, dog. He, mm. he, taught, me, he taught me so much. You know what I'm saying? And now, it's like, man, I... I know what I'm doing now. Right, I ain't right. finna. I ain't finna make no minimum wage now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got. I got a skill. Right. I got a right. skill, and if you want my skill, you're gonna have to pay me for it. Right. I'm. Absolutely. I'm good at what I Absolutely. do. Pay me for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So we we don't. We we always just think that oh you know it's, it's you know the minimum wage need to be level. Nah man, go out there, earn your get yourself a skill, get yourself some experience, right. and, and and get the money you want because it's right. out there. It's right. places hiring right now, dog. Like it's money out here to right. be made. You been you saying something that I I feel like. Uh, well, I think that I've, I've been trying to say for a while, and I just think we have to understand, and I and I want you to dig more into this. Um, I tell people it's three systems, right? Socialism, communism, and capitalism, right? We in this country for right now are under a capitalist society, right? All of them have their flaws. Every last one of them have their flaws. But the one that provides me and you the most opportunities to do what's best for me and my family. I personally believe it's capitalism. Going to what you said, and this is no disrespect to people that work at Taco Bell, McDonald's, Burger King, any of those fast food or low paying jobs. What the understanding has to be is that you get paid for value in the workplace. We're all valuable to God for all my saved folk. We're all valuable to God. But in the marketplace, that varies. <laughs> you can only charge so much for a yard if you only know how to cut the yard. Yep, yep. But as you learn how to edge it and blow it and rake it and whatever all comes with that, then your value in the marketplace goes up. So the reason at McDonald's or Walmart they get paid the minimum wage is because it's not hard to find someone to do that job. That's why the more that's why the more you move up, whether it's a company, whether it's in your own business, you then can dictate your price because your value goes up, right? Yep. yep. So I just think we and we we don't under like once again, this is something we don't we don't understand. We just man, like you said, I, I work all week. I should be able to no. 
no, 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 no. That's not the case. So you, I want you to kind of speak to uh, us living under cap capitalism. Um, and, yep, yep. And, and looks like we're going towards a little socialism here, but I'll let you kind of speak more to that. All right, so I'll say my views on that are a little bit different, mm -hmm. and I will say that I. All right, so we we're told we live in a capitalistic system, okay. but the game been rigged for so long mm -hmm. that we can't see it. Right. You know okay. what I mean? So so that's why we don't think capitalism don't work is right. because the game being rigged so long okay. they've been okay. keeping us from from once you, you can't make a certain amount of money because you got like if I open a store, mm -hmm. how's my store gonna compete with Walmart? Uh, How am I gonna compete okay. with Amazon? Okay. You put these you put these super corporations out there, mm -hmm. which. Call me what you want. Call me conspiracy theorist, but mm -hmm. these super corporations, I think most of them are owned by the government. Right. You mm -hmm. know, so okay. you know you got to right. think because they, I mean, they they getting all the money back somehow, some way, some mm -hmm. form, some fashion, okay. and they get all these government contracts, get all this government money rolling in. Okay. They grow up. They one thing you you never heard about them, and the next thing you know, they all over everywhere. Right. So <laughs> you know, and, and don't get me wrong, and that that might be from some valid research too. But of course, I know people don't believe in research no more. Right. They just right. say follow along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, Whatever Facebook so, say. Oh, yep, yep. Instagram. Yeah. So. So, but um, but it's hard to compete with all of these major corporations, okay. and okay. and even from a uh, even from like my business in lawn maintenance and landscaping, mm -hmm. you got companies like Brightview out here who got trucks everywhere. Right. You know they got half of the commercial properties in Jacksonville. Right. So it's hard for me to get into that market right. because right. guess what? You got that co just that one company, and then of right. course you got other several big several other big companies right. that's that's going to overtake a market like that. But did but did Brightview or multiple companies? And this is just not them, Walmart, whatever company. Didn't they start with one van? They started with one lawnmower. You know what yep, I mean? Yep, yep, of course, of course, of course. But, you know, over time, and it, and it used to be that way to where you could build and grow and become mm -hmm. a, a, a big business owner. But mm -hmm. I would say over the last probably 20 to 30 years or so, kinda it's kind of it's kind of yeah. shifted more towards the super mega conglomerates. Mm -hmm. So you got all of these big, big companies right. that kind of take over most of the market share right. with any type of market right. that you want to tap right. into. Right. Right. So right. they've made it difficult for it yeah. to be a true capitalistic system, and that's why they got us convinced that capitalism Capitalism don't, don't work. work. Now, the system we actually really live in under is like a soft form of communism. Okay. We just don't know it. Because, see, in communism, you have a propaganda media, which we have a propaganda media. that We, we, we know it. Um, you have uh, you, you tax the death. You, we definitely tax the death. You know, uh, let me see. Um, anything, you, anything and everything you want to do, guess what? got to be regulated by? The government. The government. Yep. And it's red tape all over everything. There's so many government regulations on every single thing. Nothing you can't do without nothing going without going through the government. government. And that's uh, that's really what a communist it's society like, yep, is. Yep. You want to buy a house? Guess who got it? The government. Yeah, the government. You want to get married? You want you want to have a kid? Mm -hmm. Government. You want to do this? Government. You want to start a business? Go everything. everything. Government. We government. Do, government. We have to report it. We got to report to the you government. Get married, you got to report it. Kid. You got to report it. <laughs> you know. So. It, wow. And, wow. and 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 that's the thing, you know, and and but and we don't understand it. And mm -hmm. see, we also don't understand in a communist society that you know it, it's it's hard to uh, have any individualism, you know, because mm -hmm. you have that media pushing that narrative to everybody all at the same time. So then when you got people that break away from that narrative, mm -hmm. they become an outsider. They yeah. become somebody who conspiracy theorists. Don't, 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 don't think different. Yeah, don't don't think don't think different. Don't think different. Because yeah. as soon as you do that, you're a conspiracy yeah, theorist. Yeah, yeah. you crazy. And, Yep, you crazy. Yeah. And then like even like a lot of people don't like to talk about Trump, but even with Trump, if you if you're a white person that support Trump, you're a racist. And if you're a black person that support Trump, you're Uncle Tom. Tom. Yeah. You know, and that and, and that and that's not fair to say about people, you know, because right. everybody got their own reasons why they support and believe what they believe. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that you know, so you know, it's it's but but it's it's like that though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's right. all it's all narrative based. Yeah. Should you we know? should we be more business focused? I, I when I talk to people and speaking of people like Trump, it's like you you ain't gonna see me with no mega hat on. Like I'm not I'm not gonna do that. Like the the you know I'm not just gonna go against my people to go against the grain. But I don't like him because of who he is as a person. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 listening to what he's talking about because I believe once again we kind of going back for as far as the capital and society. But I'm one of those people that believe America is based on money. So I don't believe anything moves without somebody getting paid like that's my oh, yeah. that's 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 my die hard belief so i don't go into anything emotionally i don't care if the person that's in there likes me or not because i believe we had a president for eight years who we were convinced was there for us they were going to make changes strictly for us 
And after eight years, he was the nicest president in the world. He never lost his temper. He was so posed at the podium, as one person told me. But then when I asked about policy, I don't get anything. I don't have any answers, answers for that. So I don't really get into this thing about who likes me or not. I look at everything as a business transaction. I don't believe yep. if African Americans found out Jeff Bezos was racist, they're going to turn in a Amazon Prime. No. Nah. If they find out mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg is racist, they're not going to delete their Facebook. They not. If they find out Sam Walton is president, I mean, was racist, they're still going to go to Walmart. So, like, we pick and choose emotionally, yep. like, who we going who we going to support now. So, how what what do you think about that as far as how we view politics? Should we go in more um business minded? Should we make it more personal? Like what you think? Well, see, it, like you said, it got to be what's in it for me. Right. It got to be what's in it for me. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, it, and and like even right now, like we 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 uh, let's say, well, let's say Joe Biden in office, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, supposedly, I mean, I guess black people got him in. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Right, right. But if if we got him in, guess what? Now it's time for it's time for you to, to pony up. It's time for you to pay pay what you what, what did you say you gonna do for black people? Right. You say you gonna do this, this, right. and this. Right. It's time for you to pay up. Right. But the thing about it, like I say, just like Malcolm told us, just like Malcolm told us, we're a political chunk. Yep. Cause we ain't even gonna ask them to pay up. No, nope. we just glad we we just glad it happened. We, we glad, just glad we you glad were off. We got one off. We got one wolf out. <laughs> yeah. And listen, and, and, and I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned the wolf because let me tell you, like, and this is, I mean, we go. I'm sorry, man. I, I, go. Malcolm, go. we going back to Malcolm. Come on. So Malcolm told us he said, man, look, the difference between a white conservative and a white liberal mm -hmm. is this: at least the white conservative is a wolf. He gonna tell you he don't tell like you. you. He's a wolf. Right. He, he gonna tell you I'm a wolf. I'm here to eat you. <laughs> hey, look, it is what it is. Right. But he said a white liberal like a fox. They come in, they pretend to be the friend of a black person, mm -hmm. and they really, you know, they gonna they gonna slaughter. They 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 not just looking to eat one. They gonna slaughter your whole the mm -hmm. whole thing. You know what I mean? Waving hands, kissing babies. Waving hands, kissing babies. Wow. And see, like, and and, and the, something else that we touched on a little bit was just like the the aspect of your belief system, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't realize how much of our belief systems come from politics. Right. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, politics yeah, yeah. and media, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it, it, we don't realize how much uh, they, they play this game. It's, a, it's a really a game of spiritual warfare is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about it. We don't know it. We don't understand how it works. You know what I mean? So we just we just vote how they tell us to vote. Right, right. Um, you know. Another one. Another one of these uh, policies or things that's on the table is abortion. I think that's another one of the uh, big, big discussions between the two. Where do you, where do you kind of stand on that as far as uh, regulations and which, which way we should go and who should have say over what? Like, how do you? Well, I know it's a touchy subject, and the ladies don't be mad at me, but I'm, I'm gonna say how I really feel about it. You know, I mean, we, we gotta talk about this because it's a thousand black babies being aborted every day. Mm -hmm. You know, if that, if that don't look like genocide, I don't know what is. Right. You know, we, we will get upset if they put a, if they, if the media tells us that a cop shot one black per, five black people a year, we gonna get pissed off. We're going to be mm -hmm. upset, we but we killing, we killing a thousand babies a day mm -hmm. because we don't want to be responsible or we don't want to, you know, take responsibility for our actions, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and, and, and raise these children, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, and then on top of that, you know, it's, it's like the, the whole idea of it is kind of, it's kind of something's got to be off with it because if, if I lay down and I have a baby with a young lady, they're going to get a baby my last name, mm. but they're going to give her that baby. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what's mm. up with that? Now, think about this now. We carry these seeds our whole life. Mm -hmm. We carry these seeds our whole life. And the biology would say that this is this man should have some say-so over the life of his child. That's what biology would say. Yeah, that's what biology would say. But, of course, you know, we only listen to science when it comes to COVID. We don't listen to it when it comes to nothing else. So, you know, uh, but uh, and like I said, be mad at me for saying it, but it's the truth, man. We don't think about these things. We don't think about how, and we're talking about the system. Mm -hmm. We don't think about that part of the system. That's mm -hmm. another part of the system, mm -hmm. you know, because if you break up the nuclear uh, household, mm -hmm. you keep that man out of the house. Mm -hmm. And back to, you said, the way we talk politics, the recent version of the way we talk politics comes from this. Mm -hmm. When... In the 1960s, um, they started removing all of the factories, your warehouses, mm -hmm. and jobs, and a lot of, that a lot of black men used to work at. They used mm -hmm. to get pensions, used to make bread, take care right. of the families. Right. Shoot, you remember, you, you heard stories about granddad taking care of two families. Yeah. It's like, damn, are you right. taking care of two families? Right. And right. it's because they was making right. good money, they was living well, right. you know, doing those kind of jobs. You had stronger black families back when there was more racism than you do now when we have a lot more opportunities. <laughs> 
and racism has been eradicated to to a degree. Yep, yep. And see, but but wow. but but you got to think. Like I said, we we thought we won with the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. We thought we got the civil rights act signed, so that means we win. Right. We we take all these right. symbolic victories. Right. Now we can drink in their fountain and yeah. ride on the front of the bus. So now we yeah think yeah. So now yeah. we think we yeah. nah. But the truth is, shoot, really to be honest, black, white, anybody, unless you're one of the people that's making decisions, pulling the strings. Mm -hmm. We all slaves, right. still, right. you know what I'm saying? So, and, and until we decide that we want to free ourselves, mm -hmm. until we decide that we want to really look at who our real enemies is, mm -hmm. and the thing about it is, people have been telling us this whole time. All of the, my, Malcolm told us, uh, and, and, oh, the Fred Hampton movie just came out, the, and the Black Panther Party is another one that get a, a bad break, because they always viewed as an anti-white group, mm -hmm. and that wasn't the Black Panther Party. Mm -hmm. Just like they infiltrated Buddy to kill Fred Hampton, mm -hmm. they had a lot of people that inf they infiltrated the Black Panther Party, Party mm -hmm. with to push a message of violence mm -hmm. and uh, racism against mm -hmm. white people and things like that to mm -hmm. destroy the message of the Black Panthers because they were such a strong positive group and they mm -hmm. taught the right things and that carried on to the Bloods and the Crips because those gangs also were not started yep, as yep. violent gangs. Yeah, yeah, yep, they weren't started as violent gangs. They used to have mm -hmm. dance contest. They said they used to fight against each other, but like as a sport, mm -hmm. you know. And then of mm -hmm. course, once they got the once they once then. they got infiltrated mm -hmm. and they got the drugs involved and they got different things involved, mm -hmm. it became dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, they used, they say used to be clubs. They just used to be clubs, and then they took the clubs and they separate them. But the thing about it is, if you really look into that whole thing, that was a government thing. Mm -hmm. If you look into the riots, that was a government thing. Mm -hmm. They caused these upheavals mm -hmm. in order to, to to sell whatever narrative they want. And then not only that, you got like like I was watching a Fred Hampton interview the other day, and he was talking about how um, there was another activist at the time mm -hmm. that was was trying to get people to go out and fight the police and, and shoot the police. And you know, he said. Why would he said the Black Panther not but Black Panthers not like that? We're not associated with that. We don't do that kind of stuff. Mm. We're not gonna lead nobody to their own slaughter. That's right. dangerous. Right. He said we might be gun, we might teach self defense, but we're not teaching nobody to walk into their own slaughter. Right. Right. You know, right. so it's, it's 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 like that. So but the media and he said the media, the media is the one telling y'all that we associated with this. Right. Right. You know, and we don't we don't roll like right. this. Right. We don't roll like this. Right. You know, so right. it's so you, you spoke about shooting. I want to get to that. Where do you stand on gun ownership? I think that's another one of those uh, topics that's been 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 in the news. You got a big divide um, with that, usually coming down to parties and then even trickling down to feelings. Oh, you shouldn't be able to have this type of gun. I should be able to have whatever kind of gun I want. Uh, you should just Listen. take all the guns off the street, or I think you should just have more regulations. Where do you stand? Uh, <laughs> go on the brother. Go, go on, give it to him. Hey, right, listen, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna give it to Darren yeah, Ross. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like this. I feel like if the U.S. government could own a tank, I wouldn't mm, be able to buy a tank. There we go. And because oh, 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 the thing about it is, if we, the, the, that's the reason why gun ownership exists. We don't think about that though. Mm. It's because if we ever had to fight against our own tyrannical government, mm. we would have the assets and means to be able to do it. Right. You know, so if we ever had an uprising where the government says, "All right, we want to kill off all our citizens." Mm. We would have the means to fight back, mm. and without uh, without having guns, without being able to own guns, we don't have no way to fight back. Because right. guess what? The military still gonna have them. Right. The police gonna still gonna have them, right. and the criminals who want to get them still right. gonna have them. Right. So that's so key. You, you know, know it, it, that's what I'm. I'm always lost. So people, the lady told me one time, she said, um, "Well, if just nobody has guns, then the world, then the world will be safe." And I'm thinking, well, criminals will get their hands on the guns. Ultimately, that's why they're criminals. They'll they'll find ways. They'll get the guns on the on the black market. And then she said again, the, we were having another discussion. She brought up assault weapons. She said, "Well, maybe you should uh, just ban assault rifles because people use them to kill lots of people at one time." I'm like, "Well, what if the a person uses a handgun to then kill a lot of people? Do we then ban the handgun? Right? At, at what point do we not blame the item and we blame?" <clears throat> we blame the person. So this this gun discussion is is, is one of those one of those, those tricky topics. Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, you know, as far as that goes, you know, of course, you know, anything, you know, just a law of polarity. Anything that can be used for bad can be used for good. Anything mm -hmm. can be used for good can right. be used for bad. Right. So it really right. depends on who's <laughs> using that gun. Right, right. The gun ain't just jumping up and shooting people. There we go. You know, so we gotta we gotta uh, attack attack each one of those issues separately. Right. Because if I'm out here shooting somebody, it's important to find out why I shot this person. Right. right. You know, and that's from any standpoint. Mm -hmm. And just a, the another political stuff thing. You know, one of the things I found out when I was running for politics, uh, running for office is 
the unsolved homicide rate. Mm, okay. Seventy percent of homicides go un unsolved. Really. Seventy percent. Okay. Is that a lack of staffing? A uh, lack of care on the on on the department? Like, what do you what are you attributing? That percentage too. Well, percentage that high, man. You know, it's it's, it's hard to say it's not. They're not doing it on purpose. Right. It's hard to say that. I mean, right. but uh, you know, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. Right. You know, because I do have respect for what some of these mm -hmm. people do. Because mm -hmm. just like with any profession, you got right. good cops, you got yeah, bad right. cops. Right. You know, you got good police departments, you got bad police departments. Mm -hmm. But it just seemed like in a city like Jacksonville, Baltimore, and pretty much anywhere else you go that has a high violent crime rate, mm -hmm. it seemed like a lot of killers being left out on the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. and then of course we, you know. The way people work is we we don't really understand that. All right, so if I'm a killer, if I can shoot, pull the trigger, kill a person once, mm -hmm. the second time I'm put in a position, it's going to be easier for me to do it. Mm -hmm. Every time it's going to be a little bit easier for me to break my own moral right, and right. humanity. My own, it's going I'm gonna be able to break my own humanity to the point where it's it's gonna be nothing to me. Mm -hmm. Where as soon as the altercation starts, I'm ready to pull up, pull a gun out right. and shoot somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. We, you know, when when you when you lowering your own soul force in that way, you know, you you putting yourself to the, you know what I mean. So, it, but it, but it's still back on that individual person, you know. But it, you know, they know they know how these things work. They know the government know how our DNA work. They know how our minds work. They know how different things work better than we do. And they use a lot of those systems of our own bodies and minds and souls against us. And we don't we don't even realize they're doing it. Wow. Well, let me. I, I got one more, y'all, and, and uh, I'm gonna end it on this. I know I, I, I really want to pick your brain. Uh, reparations. <laughs> we um, when that when that that word comes up or that conversation uh, comes up, there's a group that says, "Hey, we've been enslaved. We've been systematically oppressed um, for hundreds of years. Um, we've been lied to. We've been promised land. Um, there's a lot owed to us." There's another group of people that says, um, we never owned slaves. We shouldn't be held accountable for what our ancestors did. Um, you already have reparations with welfare and, and, and government assistance. Where do you stand uh, when it comes to the, the, the conversation on reparations? Whew. I'll tell you this one. It's To me, it's kind of a, a, a touchy subject. To be honest with you, because it's like, all right, now let's say tomorrow the government decided they're going to give us reparations. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to the money? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to the money? Let's be real. Mm -hmm. We blowing the check. We blowing it. We going to give it right back to them. We going to give them the money right back. Mm -hmm. We going to give them the money right back. <laughs> hey, you I see? Say, hey, listen. Listen. You remember the Dave Chappelle skit? Yep. <laughs> you remember the Dave Chappelle? Yep. Yep. Hey, listen. Listen. Hey, listen. Uh, you know, all these big brand name companies, all these big companies who already got millions and billions of dollars, they're going to they gonna have a lot of money. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I will say this. The last four to five years, mm -hmm. I will say that more people have become more business minded, mm -hmm. more into land ownership, more into business ownership, more into taking care of their business, more into saving a little money, mm -hmm. you know. But we just getting into it. Right, right. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right, right. Yeah, I still got a long way to go. You still still got a long way to go. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I'm I you know, I think reparations could be a good idea if done properly and done right and done to, you know, and make sure that the proper research is done right. to make sure that the proper uh things go to the bright families and yes. stuff like that right, right, right. but a lot of the time man a lot of those things like that really get misused and those funds get misused and we end up seeing a, a very small percentage of it and somebody somewhere up the chain that's controlling the thing they're gonna see a big chunk of cash you know because that's politics that's the way politics works so that's why they usually push something like that wow man. so bro that was a. Uh, I i appreciate you coming through man i, I yes, really sir, hope yes, sir. whoever watched this man y'all got some 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 kind of insight you know, uh, we didn't have this discussion for you to agree on everything. What we had it for was to hopefully spark some kind of thinking. Um, I think a lot of time in our community, like we discussed earlier, we're so one-track minded and we're so emotionally attached to something that we don't give opportunity or give way for any other perspective or or way of thinking um, to yeah, what's yeah. going on. So. But just to end it, man, like I said, um, you kind of told us what you kind of experienced with uh, running for mayor. Um, is there anything else that you see um, in the near future coming down the pipe with us, the current mayor, uh, anybody else, uh, city council? I know you spoke on spoke on city council. Anything you, you think coming up that we need to be ready for as far as as far as our current our current local government? 
Well, I, I really think, you know, I'm, I am might go on a little bit of a tangent. Cause I know we got to get it done, get it wrapped up. But um, one of the things, like, it's like right now we should be doing stuff. Like mm -hmm. right now we should be re re reaching out to our local council people. Right, right, right. You know, not waiting. Not, not waiting, right, you know, because okay. we shouldn't be waiting until election time to come talk to us about the issues. Right. It should be going on while you're in office. But this one we should, this is the time where we need to be connecting right. and figuring out what's what. Right. Like I say, man, we... And like even even with the mayor, it's like, man, all right, so downtown. We've been waiting on downtown to become something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we don't need like everybody was mad about Lot J and this and that. Like they trying, they trying, they trying, but it's like, man, we don't need that. It's a lot mm -hmm. of different things you could do down there. Mm -hmm. Downtown got so much potential. We got yeah. we got Jacksonville is prime time prime real estate. It's prime, it's prime real estate. Absolutely. It's prime real estate. We got a beautiful river running through the middle of it. We got the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and then our downtown right on the water in the right. got in the middle of it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, man, what are we really doing now? Now this could be a beautiful attraction, and it's just. You know, but you know, there's it's people who own a lot of the land down there too. That's that, that and, and and you know, they play ball with the city. Right, they play right, ball with right, the big money, right, and right. that's you know, they control a lot of the politics down there too. Wow, wow. man, I appreciate you, bro. Yes, uh, sir. For coming in and, and and blessing us today. Uh, and listen, once again, y'all, I hope y'all got something out of this uh, conversation. Um, I appreciate Mr. Vashon for coming in and, and and speaking and sitting with me today. And again, y'all will be back on the Serving Real on Serving King TV next week. All right, man. See y'all later. Yo. Yo.